This is an emergency broadcast of the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. This is not a drill. Remove any children and pets from your home and go to your nearest shelter. Remember to at all times listen to the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. And whatever you do, do not under any circumstances. Trust what you see. It's 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 rough. I'll manage. But holy hell, uh, it is a lot. Well, at least, you know, you're okay. It's uh, it's Easter Sunday. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. That's the intro I want to do. A, it's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Easter Sunday. <laughs> hey, have, have you ever went to one of those monster truck shows? No. Oh, I, um, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. It, it, it feels like a very Montana thing to do, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, even California. A friend of mine took me. When I was what, dude, 19? they look so much fun. They, they are so much fun. It was one of the best times I've ever had. I think it was in Riverside. We drove to Riverside or something. Of that course, does in not, that does not surprise <laughs> me. It was in Riverside. Dude, it was so like loud. Like I was deaf. Like I was completely deaf by these crazy trucks because it's not just monster trucks. They have other ones like just fire coming out, explosions, and people are just screaming. It was so intense, and it was one of the funniest things. I'll never forget it. And it was so long ago. And I only went once, and I, you know, I have great memories of it. Dude, Definitely uh, recommend it, you know, for if you want to get your testosterone out. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I know, I know, like monster truck drivers are like really good drivers. Like they can do like wheelies and, yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, and these trucks—they're huge. It's not easy to like drive these things, right? right. They're jumping up high. I mean, they're flying. You're, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, it's so crazy watching them. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, it, it reminds me because growing up, also we had these remote control cars. Uh, the RC, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that we put together, and I, I had one called the Midnight Pumpkin. So it was one of those. It was a really big monster. <laughs> so it reminded me of that, even though it was so huge in front of me. That's how they were driving these things. Yeah, so insane. <laughs> Sunday, 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 Sunday. <laughs> Come down to the racetrack. And- yeah, what happened to those guys' voices? And they always like overlap the voice. Like the, the, you can got, tell they, they record each phrase separately and then like overlap them. It got it got phased out. Um actually yeah. we were we were talking about work. Um yeah. we were playing like that like uh late nineties, early two thousands, like grunge. Or I guess yeah. it was just like through the two thousands, like grunge music. And do you remember like all all of the voices sounded like this, <laughs> you know, like yeah, 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 exactly. I think because the comedians started making fun of it, like what's, what's the big one, uh, Pablo Francisco. He yeah, oh my god, he was he was great, but he like was something else, yeah. People make fun of Nickelback now. I don't think they realize like how popular Nickelback was like twenty yeah. years ago. They were huge. I, it's because I remember when they first came out. I was in I was in D.C., so it was like probably two thousand, right before two thousand one, yeah. and I I was in, that's when I came out of military school. So I, I had no TV. You know, we weren't. I mean, we were allowed, but then we, they phased it out of us because because the first six weeks you're not allowed any TV, no phone, nothing. Right while they're like hazing you, and then but we, there was a rec room. But who had time when we had military and school? I would never even go in there. It was always like wrestling on there anyway you know, it was always wwe and people going crazy <laughs> over the rock you know it was those, during those yeah. days yeah yeah so when i when i got out i was in dc i got cable television <sighs> and i was just shocked of how the world changed i mean it was all it was like different mtv channels i don't know how many there were like mtv2 mtv this mtv that and then nickelback there was one for just like new rock or something and nickelback was huge yeah Look at this photograph. <laughs> yeah, he always sang like that. He looked like a dog, like a wet Afghan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to say that. No, the dog Afghan. Sorry, not like the <laughs> Afghan person. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, do you remember uh, what was it called when it went from like cable to digital cable? Do you remember that, like that whole oh, chain? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. With, with the recording too, right? You can record it. it uh, was yeah. It DVR or no? TiVo. Oh, oh TiVo. Yeah, TiVo was the first one. That's right. Even like Oprah was pushing TiVo. And it, and there was DVR. Yeah, but me and my brother would get home from school, and uh, there was this uh digital cable channel. It, it was just I can't remember what the name of it. it doesn't fucking matter. It was just music videos that played all 
like 24 7 it was just music videos music video. and me and my brother would 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 get home and just watch that all day <laughs> yeah i mean uh it wasn't it wasn't mtv2 because i know mtv became just all these shows so they opened up mtv2 and it was they had all like the it was only music videos and they had a lot of the uh, what do you call it uh the unplugged oh yeah oh. i remember <laughs> See, I was never, I was never into the, and I'm still not into the, like the the reality shows or whatever. You're gonna do this the worst. This is it really. It's not is even. It's, it's not even reality. In fact, we had a family member on one of yep. those quote unquote reality um, TV oh, shows, right. and it's not, it's not reality no, <laughs> at all. No, no, and they made us sign everything. They made, they, they, they basically make you sign documents before you go. Uh, but sorry, before they start filming that, it's basically like a gag order. You're not allowed to talk about any of this, but we all do. Um, yeah. you know, I think we're going to be scared. Like, is that really enforceable? You know, it's not, you know. But yeah, it's just, it's scripted, totally scripted. Yeah, 100. And and that's what I think people fail to realize about, like, um, what the hell is, uh, um, what's the, what's the, what's the, <laughs> yes, news. What's the singing show? uh what's singing show? oh wait oh like vo the voice oh american idol that one yeah I mean, yeah it, all voice. of that i don't think people realize it's totally totally fake of course i mean all of a sudden they have crews coming to their to their houses and telling their story on camera they don't do that for every single contestant right imagine if they did that for thousands the budget <laughs> in the billions yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so yeah, all right. they, they definitely choose. All right, yes. By the way, this is episode eighteen. Just so, so <laughs> how far how far in are we? It's been it's been a while. Anyway, um, this is episode eighteen of the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. Yeah, uh, that is Adam. I am Topher. Um, and as you can tell, we really you know trying to stay on topic. Uh, and I truthfully. Have not looked at any of the links you've sent me <laughs> today. All right, that's so fine. I'm, I'm coming in completely blind. I'm just gonna... well. There we go. That's, that's unscripted, uh, people. That's yeah, real unscripted here. So I am going to take the uh, place of the audience and just kind of react <laughs> to whatever you got for me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good. I mean, and and because you know, I was. Uh, I don't know if there, if there wasn't a lot going on, but there's some cool stuff going on. Um, definitely. I did. Um, there wasn't and sent too many links. So hopefully we can at least get to the hour. I know last last week we did way more than an hour for um, for Skinny Bob. Skinny Bob. That, that was, was really great. cool. I, I I enjoyed going through all that stuff. I still remember I was. So I was listening to it again when I edited. Yeah. I still think it's fake. I still. Yeah. Think yeah. I'm with you. And and uh, I what it was, what I liked about it is that, you know, going down deep like that and then, and then talking to you about it is i had another conclusion when i was when i started talking to you about like hearing your hearing what you had to say uh, i'm not saying what what we concluded was real but i think it's probably as close as close to it we can we can get without really knowing the truth you know it's yeah. extremely difficult um but i don't know i mean we maybe we should start with um what's his face jack valet had an interview on uh the guy network uh and you know jack Valet, of course we all yeah. know jack Valet. He's, he's been at this for a long time he he's one who brought us that uh isn't that it, is, isn't it, isn't it jacques? jacques 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 Valet, yes and, and he's the one who tell, who's been saying for a long time that this is not a nuts and bolts phenomenon and that it has to do with our consciousness and inner dimensions and you know these things right he, he really brought that to the table um and it took a while for it to for people to accept that fact. Now, what's interesting about this, or about what he's been pushing, or not pushing, but um, um, what he's been like, talking his about, book, yeah, talking about is is the Trinity case. You know, um, now the Trinity case, if people don't know, it happened. It happened in, in uh, 1945. And this was after a month after the first nuclear test, the secret nuclear test that that we did. Um, and apparently, this this craft crashed. There was two witnesses who were farmers, uh, I think cattle farmers. There were kids at the time, and they told their story. There's evidence of of like an actual um, actual material that came out of it. Anyway, so this is a good interview. I think I'm gonna play a snippet, and he asks Valet. Basically, you know, 
how do you feel about this, that you've been saying this phenomenon is not really nuts and bolts, and now you're talking about this and you have a book about it. Oh, and the U.S. government actually, the last NDAA that was signed a few months ago, put it in there that they want, they, they ordered the Department of Defense to do an, an official investigation into this incident in 1945. Um, but it's nukes, as usual, you know. So let's give it a listen. I Hopefully I stopped at the right time. He's asking Jacques Vallée right here. One of the things uh, that you started to present uh, to the world and to our community uh, very early on was th this contact in these craft may not be what we want them to be. There may be something interdimensional here. There may be something else. There may be a connection with our consciousness to what may be happening too as well. This Booyah. isn't, <laughs> you know, from that side of the fence. How do you feel about that? And is it something that conflicts with your past research? It doesn't conflict. It um, validates past research, not only mine, but that of many other people who've looked at crashes or close encounters. Uh, the case in Socorro, and there is a similar case in Valençol in France. In all three cases, they, there was a, a thorough investigation by the state not by you know a ufo group or volunteers or people like me mm -hmm. but by by the, the, the french government for mm -hmm. example in the case of valençol by the army and the air force project blue book and dr heineck in the case of socorro where we in the book we brought new uh, new descriptions new interviews that nobody has seen before about socorro uh, in all three cases it wasn't a disc it wasn't a flying saucer. It was an egg-shaped object. Let, let me jump in. Josh, pull that up. We have a, a, a drawing here. This is part of your research. And obviously, there's a similarity here between not only Socorro. All right. So here, yeah, they're talking about, I guess, um, they're talking about similar cases then, what he's saying. So they're saying it's not mm -hmm. a saucer, but egg-shaped. So th what they're showing here is the one in, in France. And I think the story of this... What, what got Heineck, you know, Heineck was in charge of Project Blue Book, right? Right. Uh, there was a case in Socorro, New Mexico, I think around this time. Also, it was an egg-shaped object. That's, that's There was an officer in New Mexico, in Socorro, New Mexico. Do you, do you know the story where he was chasing someone who was speeding, and then he heard an explosion, so he stopped beating the guy. He went and to check it out. Out in the desert, he saw like an egg-shaped object with beings checking out the 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 object or like – or or doing something and he saw an emblem like a triangle on on the vehicle and when they saw him they got in and it took off um so but this this one what they're showing now is is the one in in france so a very similar object yeah totally i mean uh, th this also goes along with the um the the nimitz sighting i mean i know it's like a yeah a tic tac right yeah yeah exactly you know, I'm just really starting to think the nuts and bolts stuff, it might be just an advanced species here with us, you know, on, on this planet or or in the solar system, I'm saying, not very far away. Something right. that's that's here, um, just around us, especially that, especially with, with the emblem that, that that's in the Socorro one, it's, he, he showed, he, he drew it. It was like a triangle or with an arrow showing that this way is up. You know how our army tanks have that too? They say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah, I feel like there's there's something um, I don't even know how to describe what I'm thinking about. I just think there's a uh, maybe it's military. Well, it would have to, or or governmental. Mm -hmm. um, it's just there's something in our, our very close space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Not far, not too far away. Not. I mean, so it's not that right. alien. Uh, yeah. Plus, that, yeah, you know, sorry. there was the whole. Uh, gary mckinnon thing where you mm -hmm. know you know he found evidence that we had stuff up uh in space there's the i'm trying to remember the name of the ship uh, uh uss something well i don't think he got this he, he he saw that it said there was a file or a folder that said non-terrestrial officers right no he, yeah exactly he did see uss you know, but he couldn't remember what it was or something like that no but there's evidence of it the uss oh oh are you talking about solar warden that thing that, yeah uh, kind of yeah that leaked out this is a what project. the hell is the name the it's the the enterprise 
No. <laughs> I want to say Nebuchadnezzar, but that's from the Matrix. <laughs> that's the Matrix. Yeah. No, there's like a... Every, oh, this is going to drive me nuts. There's a name of a... Sh it doesn't matter. But there... Right, okay. keep, keep, keep going with the video. Okay, let's see what happens. I've been talking about here about France. Um, and France. But today, some of the descriptions of the Tic Tac in that uh -huh. we are nice dealing one. with an old, <laughs> this is it. a flying saucer. It's not a triangle. It's a very descriptive uh, craft. And and here it is here. Does it remind you of not only modern phenomena, but uh, back to Socorro? Certainly. You know, again, my background is in computer science and in, you know, looking for patterns and applying artificial intelligence to complex patterns in, in, in science. Here, you know, it's inescapable. And when you look at one case, is there is no one case, whether it's Tic Tacs or anything else, that's going to convince the public, it's going to convince the academy. What is going to be convincing and move us along is looking for patterns, looking for statistical patterns mm -hmm. on a large number of cases, which, as you know, I've done, mm -hmm. but also looking at specific patterns on the ground where we can have intense investigation over weeks and months and investigation of the materials that are recovered in all three of these cases or more cases that build a picture that we can show to scientists that will well, good yeah exactly and you know, that that's he, he's he's right and that's what people want to see you know it's mm -hmm. stories it's witnesses we need people want to see the materials being studied scientifically. And, you know, that, that might push ac academy and say, all right, this is real. Now they might not, they, might, they won't say it's alien and we probably won't, you probably won't until you actually like, you know, like you always said, you'll shake, you shake hands with one, but at least it'll, it'll be like, this is real. Stop the whole, like, you know, these are hoaxes or hallucinations or that stuff. We need to, we need more people on our side with this. Um, Unfortunately, that's how government works, right? They need the masses to <clears throat> band it, not a small fringe. Yeah. Well, I I mean, this is kind of why I think it's more wooey wooey than than it is uh nuts and bolts uh UFOs uh landing on our planet. I mean, what would scare the government so bad, right, that they have to like hide this and hide this so hard from us? Um, cause I really don't think it'd be, it, 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 I don't think it'd be a big deal if, you know, they came out and said, oh, you know, Martians also live here among us. Yeah. You yeah. know, I just think it well, has to be. I mean, yes and no, I would say, I would say that's, yeah, right. It's not that scary, but then there'll be a faction that like, well, we want the technology. We want to control how technology is advanced. And if we're the focal point or the, uh, you know, um, you know, how you, when, you, when you squeeze a hose and, you know, you're the one who's, who's controlling what, how much comes out, you know, if, yeah. if, if they're that right there, then they stay in power and they're the ones who stay rich. So there's an element of that, too. However, I did just get a book. I haven't, I haven't started yet by Rick, uh, Nick Redfern. He wrote, he's, he's written great books. Apparently, it's about... Yeah, he wrote. He wrote. Sorry, he wrote uh, Men in Black. I've re I've, yeah. I've read him before. Yeah, yeah, and great and other great books. Yeah, and but there's one that he's he he covers about a, a group of uh, government scientists that were inv that were investigating the really scary part of this, the really disturbing part of this, and they have to live with this every single day. And something about how something to do with enslavement of the soul, you know, something really scary like that. Um, like that, that, they're, that they're demonic <clears throat> not only that they uh, use us for sustenance there's something more nefarious going on about it um, which is extremely like disturbing and that's why it's hidden and they don't know how to get it out so I'm, I'm gonna start reading that and see where it goes um he's always he's all he's always really good with that um, yeah i mean honestly yeah um so it has to be I, something like that why it's kept so secret right exactly that's what i'm trying to say yeah yeah, um, something that the people found out it'll just be not, not just chaos. Maybe people don't even wouldn't care. The system we're under would collapse basically. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
it wouldn't it would be no more overnight pretty much yeah yeah it'd be complete chaos i uh, you know in in that tone that of it being wooey and just really bizarre there was another interview and it's a long one but i i, I stopped it hopefully stopped it at the right at the right time he is he is thinking there is a a, a mix or a relationship with owls and these aliens and ufos uh remember there was a movie about this too uh it was called the fourth kind i think yes yes that's what it's called okay instead of like yeah the fourth kind, somewhere in alaska right and she saw yep yes yeah you know what's you know what's really funny uh maybe i'll cut this too but <laughs> all of the i think that was made from a guy who went to the same college i did no um, way because all of the all of the, the like quote unquote like background like where it's filming the 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 older woman who like yeah said she experienced this it was filmed at the college i went to what look yeah. at that huh how that happens and synchronicities so, i love synchronicities yeah i know right <laughs> okay so this guy and he he tells uh just just until i cut it or where so where this is starting he tells a story of camping out in the woods with a friend of his um and he said while the sun was coming down a lot of they saw a lot of owls just swooping down swooping down swooping down they're telling stories swooping down and then they go to sleep and he goes a second night the same thing happens where they're camping outside as the sun is setting again the owls are swooping down like a lot of them are just swooping down they didn't think anything of it but the second time he says <clears throat> one of them comes down <clears throat> right to them and he says this is real right and this is where this where this clip starts now this is where i stopped it um so there's an owl that comes right near them and is looking at them so let's take a listen and this guy has done uh, a lot of research he's, he's written books about this so there's a lot of cases it's not just this case that he's talking about this is just his case that he went through and I can remember the look of astonishment on her face. She was staying right with me, and this owl was standing at our feet. And, the, and I'm going to say these are real owls. There's an aspect called a screen memory. These were real owls. We had close-up views of them. They, had, they were owls. They were about you know, 10, 11 inches tall. They were beautiful. And, and so when I was seeing these owls both nights, I had this kind of voice in my head, this very clear voice in my head that said, this has something to do with the UFOs. And, and afterwards, I started, as first I started researching owls and the mythology of owls and the folklore of owls and kind of the spirit meaning of owls. And then after that, I, I started looking into my own UFO experiences, which I had some things that had happened to me in my youth. And then one powerful event that happened when I was 30. But so that happened in 2016. Three years later, in 2009, I started a blog where it was, I was just going to catalog synchronicities because I've had a lot of these odd synchronicities and they make great blog posts. They got a little begin, they got a little punchline. They're, they're short. You can write them up quick. And, and the story I just told about seeing the owls, I put on the, on the blog. Didn't mention the UFO part. And then I contacted Kristen. That was a woman's name, Kristen. I contacted Kristen. She had moved out of the valley. We had been in touch. And I sent her a note and I said, hey, what? Actually, I talked to her on the phone. I said, what was happening the very first night when we saw the very first set of owls? And she said, oh, I remember exactly what happened. I was giving my most heartfelt definition of what God means to me. Now, ah, did you hear that? Oh yeah, I heard it. <laughs> you know, it's why is it? Why? What is the interest in our when it becomes something spiritual, right? Do you think like some kind of energy uh, is emitted from us, like from our brains or something? Because you know, and it's it, it's been harnessed in the past, right? I think churches and mosques and synagogues, all this is there to harness or or a amplify this this energy we emit when it comes to like religion and god and the creator you know um so it's very strange that this happens you know i I've, I've had one experience where i was thinking about something like this and something happened in the sky you know just something streaked by right at the height of what i was thinking you know it was like uh yeah so i, I think that's the strange that's I, I didn't hear this part 
Um, oh, uh, let me say that, like, I'm not necessarily churchy, and and that didn't, like, that didn't touch me deeply. But I did recognize the sort of symbolic and metaphoric power of that conversation happening at that moment. So after all of that, I start to look into my UFO experiences, right? So, so I see real owl. I have a voice in my head that says, this has something to do with UFOs. So I started reaching out to people. I reached out to Bud Hopkins, and I reached out to Leo Sprinkle. He was still alive. He lived in Lair. Uh, Bud Hopkins, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I think there's something to be said about, like, our – I don't know if it's like our thoughts or our beliefs – there's something in there. We, I, I feel like we give off some sort of religion, <clears throat> not religion. Yeah. We give off some sort of energy um, that can be used, harnessed for something else. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And 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 a lot of these people say it's related to consciousness. Even Bigelow now, right? He's the one who who sold. Um, he sold what? Wow, helicopter right here. Yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, what do you call it? That ranch, uh, Skinwalker Ranch. Big yeah. one. He, owned, he owned Skinwalker Ranch. That's right. And he sold it. And what is he doing now? What is, what's his new research? I have no, honestly I have no idea. Consciousness. That's what he's focused on. After 30 years, 30 plus years of investigating UFOs, yeah. and NICAP was his. And going into, uh, going into the phenomenon at, 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 at Skinwalker Ranch, he's focused now. He's convinced it has to do with consciousness. And he's focused everything now on studying the science of consciousness. Yeah, so, I mean, this, this is this is what I've been saying. Um, it, it, we're half the phenomena. I mean, you know, either we bring them in, or you know, they use us as like, um, like they're. I think I said this really early on, but <clears throat> like they're radio waves and we're antenna. Um, you know, and that's that's how. Um, they either, they're, they're either feeding off of us or that's how they use us to get here. Uh, yeah, exactly. Honestly, the more, the more I, I, I do research, the more confused I am, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and maybe that's just because, because it's about consciousness. I mean, maybe there's something in there, um, that stops us from questioning it the right way because it's, because it uses our consciousness anyway, we can't really go outside of our consciousness to question it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. I, you know, I used to have issues with this, and I don't know if it was drinking or whatever, but I used to, I used to always take notes because, you know, I, I would, whatever, smoke pot and drink and, you know, and read stuff and watch stuff, but then I would have my own thoughts and I'd write them down. But then sometimes in the middle of me writing it down, it'd be gone from me. I'm like, what? And I'll just try so hard. I'll try so hard. And only about uh, not many times without figure where I'll remember what it was. I'm like, okay, and I'll continue. But many times, and it probably was the drinking or drugs or something. But many times I'd forget. And it was because it really was like an epiphany. I'm like, that's what it is. And I was sitting there, I'd start writing it down and it'd be gone. Is that strange? I felt like it was something hard coded in us. Right. You know, I, we're not we're not supposed to think about it. Yeah, and don't get too close to it, kind of thing. Definitely, anyone, <laughs> anyone who's listening, if you get too close to like UFO and all this stuff, your life gets ruined. Yeah, yeah, it, get, it gets absolutely ruined. I mean, <laughs> look at um, oh my god, Bender. In, I think with Bender. No, I was thinking about Fire in the Sky guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't benefit anything from that, no. right? No, he did not. Um, uh, uh, Betty, and, Betty and Barney Hill, their lives were ruined. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, watched. yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, anyone who gets close to this, um, <clears throat> yeah, you get your 15 minutes of fame, but your life is absolutely over. It's destroyed. It is. Uh, so it just reminds me, when you were saying that, I just watched a video about uh, Men in Black, and I guess one of the oldest ones was something in the 50s this guy named bender he oh alfred bender yeah yeah his story really i got when i was listening to it i, I got goosebumps it really scared the hell out of me like what happened to him and he started the international ufo 
consortium or something. I, I right. Uh, I and then he had to he had to shut it down if I remember correctly. Yes, he shut it down because of black, uh, the, these men, men in black, black experiences. Yeah, yeah uh, that were coming to his house, and he would see them out in the distance in the dark, and their eyes were glowing, and it terrified him so so much. Yeah, he shut it down. I mean, yeah, so scary. Yeah, again, just thinking about that, it gives me chills because he lived out in pretty much nowhere, and. Uh, and they always wore he's, he's, they always had these 50s cars they always wore that suit the hat right yeah they still do yeah, yeah. <laughs> um his, his story his story is is super interesting uh he was he's the first if I, as far as i know um he was one of the first people to document his men in black experiences um and he had a rough go of it <laughs> to, <laughs> to really to yeah. put it lightly yeah so it sucks i mean I, i'm gonna say something i once had a, a pretty uh, a blog out there and every time i would put out something i would have and and you know that could be me right it could be just me yeah. being paranoid but i would have like just complete uh, panic attacks the next day or two um because i would let out something like that it's like i was being you know either by anyway whatever man i don't want to talk about it <laughs> let's, just say, right. let's just say it doesn't happen anymore i'm just saying <laughs> you ufo uh ufo research and when you put it out in the world um you get in trouble yeah yes yes it's like something is like shut up don't touch yeah. this subject stay stay in your place this is this is kind yeah. of why uh Adam and I are using fake names. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we don't. There's no incentive for us to get out there with our own right. names. It really is not. No, you know. <laughs> so, they, they, yeah. oh man, it's helpful to get to talk about this stuff. It's helpful to to get it out there. We want to raise awareness, obviously, because right waited for it to see the light of day. Um, and I mean. You know, where I'm, you and I are very attuned to what's going on. So no one has the time to, to like just, just sit there and, and see what's out there. So you know, we try to bring it to everyone, and they little and they'll snip it to show you. That, you know, this is a very active thing. There's a lot out there. Oh, speaking of, I don't know if you saw this one. This is a really good video, by the way. Totally. Lay it on me. All right, and you know, people are having a tough time debunking it. Uh, Still looking for the original because I did write someone. I'm like, what do you think of this? You know, he told me he's like, get the original and then we can we can talk because with AI now coming in, it's making it very difficult. Oh, to make I did these. I did see this, but go ahead and play it. All right, so this is a a Mexican airline or something that that just mm -hmm. crossed over the U.S. They saw something on radar. That's what they're pointing here. Apparently, they saw something on radar, and then this is before it shows up. So it's the for the audience, yeah, the plane that's, right. that's that's in the sky that's f viewing just the sky for right now. Just the sky, and they're pointing to where this thing is coming from. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, you know, why are they pointing? Why? How do they know this thing's going to show up? That's when I'm like, ah, fake, you know. Right. Uh, then people the are like, whole, why oh. were they filming thing? Yeah, and they're like, you know, it's radar. They see it on radar, and that's why. At least that's the excuse. I was like, okay, that makes sense. Anyway, here, let's take a look. They're not saying much. Mm -hmm. You'll see a spot. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. And. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we can pause. We can pause when it comes. Yeah. Go ahead. Pause, pause right. right there. Look at it. See, it's that same diamond shape we were talking yes. well, about. No, I wanted to zoom in. Yeah, it's the same diamond shape. It's and it's and it's and it's 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 the underneath part with like Bob Lazar used to was saying is saying that it has to point right yeah. where the gravity things are and then bring bring whatever closer to it. Look at it, look at it. Look yeah. at it. It's, it's like a stingray. <clears throat> so I mean this is like the exact didn't we watch a video last week with the diamond something and it was it last not last week, last show. Yeah. Oh, Oh, was it last show? Was that the one that was that they I mean, it was, or the one was, before that? I mean, it might have been the one before that. But anyway, it's this. Yeah, I mean, God, it looks like a. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it looks like a stingray. <laughs> yeah, it does look like a stingray. 
Uh, there are some people did take screenshots of it, you know, obviously, and it's just this guy does this. Where is it? Where are the other? His, his a screenshot right here. <sighs> Bizarre, huh? Yeah, no kidding. Um, <laughs> <coughs> sorry, I keep coughing. Yeah, I'm, I'm flaming. My um, allergies are. Yeah, everyone, everyone, dude. Yeah. I, I, I sound nasally. Everyone in the household has it. Other households, oh, it's not really cold. I think it's just allergies. Cause it's just allergies. Spring is here. Yeah, spring has sprung. Yeah, wow, that is something else, isn't it? So, people but, haven't been able to debunk it. Even, even the guys who are like, you know, it's CGI, haven't been able. What's this guy saying? What, what size would you say that is? Because to me, it looks feet, tiny. Thirty feet. Maybe no. Because look no. at it from far away. Because from far away, I don't. I don't think it's. <clears throat> so this guy from far away. This guy's flying. Flies his plane right by it. Um, I don't even think it's that big. It looks. I think it's much much smaller than that. To me, I think this might be some sort there. of drone. But see how look look how far away it is. You can still see it. So it has to be big. Hold on, I'm going full screen. Because really that's where it first here. shows up, right here. Yeah. Okay. And it's a spec, so it can't be that small. I put on mute so we can and see it. See, it's coming. It's coming. So it's got to be like thirty. No, I still think that's only like I really don't think that's that big. Like drone size? I think that's drone size. I mean, there's no propellers. I mean, it could be a military no. new mil and two, it could be a new military drone or something dropped from a plane, another plane. I mean, they saw it on radar apparently. They saw. Uh, yeah. Oh, sh well, maybe it's bigger <laughs> than I thought. It's, it's um, hard to say. It's hard to say because it really is hard to say because all you you don't have any. There's no perspective. You're comparing it against the sky. What's, what's thirty feet? Thirty feet is ten meters. So, which is us walking ten times. Uh, you know. I really, I only, I really do think it's only just a few feet. See, few it, feet, huh? like not even ten feet. No, I think it's okay. Like, here, here are the propellers. How big are propellers? I have no idea. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not uh, qualified to answer that. <laughs> oh, it's man. definitely. It's definitely something. Um, yeah. I don't. Honestly, that's that's some really good footage. I don't know what to think. I don't think it's that big. Uh, okay. I, I think at the most it's ten feet. Um, that's just my opinion, though. Ten feet. Yeah. So so it's drone like so it could be because I mean. Obviously, not all UFOs have have beings in them, right? They, in the past, uh, they have their own orbs. They've been called orbs in the past, right? Or Foo Fighters, right. yeah, or Foo Fighters, yeah, exactly. In our skies, um, so but there was another one I want to show you also. Uh, this one, this one, uh, this is pretty crazy. It is so. It says here uh, in Hawaii. In 2021, mm -hmm. May, May 31st, 2021, a person's time-lapse footage reveals a fleet of luminous, unidentified flying objects passing by in the night sky. Now, when I first read, I'm like, oh, it's probably satellites, right? Right. <laughs> Just wait to see how what they do. Um, yeah, let's put it. Oh, here I got it. This one is also pretty messed up. But I wish I had, like, the, ex the expertise to like go through and and figure out if something's been cgi because because you have those guys that can play in adobe photoshop right right and they can just see and it is pretty easy to see when you when you change the colors you can tell around here it's been if it's been doctored um but this is really cool so here they come Ooh. Okay. watch watch though here we go oh my goodness It's birds <laughs> at night in space. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's that's. Uh, it's impossible to tell how far away they are. I mean, true, yeah. But then, okay, we're about they're going fast. Oh yeah, but it is time lapse, so we don't know really how fast they're going. Oh, but, I forgot about the time lapse part. Yeah, yeah, it's time lapse, so they're actually going slower. Right. Oh look at that! I mean, there's a lot of NASA videos like this actually showing that's up. So fleet. weird. So we're looking at a night sky. Um, what looked like, well, I'll just say it. What looked like stars uh, fly across the sky. They stop making complete U-turn. Yeah. Um, I said they were birds because it would kind of look like birds, but not. 
um, as slow as they're moving uh, just from the time lapse. Wow, that is something else. Man, yeah, yeah, they just come in. Is is one in the middle that's like more is more, more luminous than the other yeah. one, mm -hmm. right? It's like they're protecting it or something, or they're taking it somewhere. Very, very weird. Very, very yeah, strange. very, very cool. Very <laughs> strange footage. I know, right? So, I mean, I lo I love that stuff. Just it could be, it could be us. I'm uh, not saying that's not. I mean, we have satellites up there. We we could have we could have a swarm, a drone of. I mean, uh, a swarm of drones. Also, pull, I know Dar pull, DARPA's working on that. Pull that, pull it up again. Um, could you? Yeah, of course. I don't think they're as high as as stars. I think it's something in in our atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, lots of people say that we have creatures in our atmosphere. Even astronauts used to say that. So here it is again. Two come in. And this one comes from the third one. And it comes back. See, the other two came back to join them. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they're nearly as high as stars. That is very interesting footage, though. It's a lot of them, huh? Yeah, there's a ton of them. Uh, I used to see videos from Mexico like that of them of these things coming in, and still there's like trails of them. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, why don't they just land? <laughs> I know. Just get on TV. It's Force just... it. But if we are an own species, that's there for a specific reason, you know. Very, we... very strange. I wish I could see the um, unsped up footage of that because that Let's would see if someone is. Uh... No, no, no. It's fine. It would. It would take. It would take forever. It's just weird. It's a weird thing. Of course, people are probably making fun of it. What's this? Yeah. Thing? What's this? Oh, why did? It... Huh? I didn't hide that. There it is. Yeah, it keeps going. Yeah, I keeps know. going away. That footage. I see that. <laughs> you saw that? This one. Yeah. I, I want this for my garden. Oh, it's promoted. Just look at it. <laughs> people are so funny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's. Very, very interesting footage. I had not, I had not seen that. Was that just posted this week? It was posted. Yeah, this was posted this week. It was actually yeah. April six. So yeah, three days ago. Yeah, I have not been very active uh, online. Uh, I did want to bring up a guy named Bruce Fenton. He's cool. Have you heard of him? Mm, he no, has, I have not. He has this theory, and it's and it's it's based in science, and he's been able to prove it. In science but it, but it's ignored and he's very frustrated by it i've read his books uh, or his book on the subject before and he he scientifically can prove that we have been upgraded in the past and it's and he has a specific date when we've been upgraded and he he puts back he has he has a graph actually um he has a graph of us basically you know that's more than evolution because it doesn't it's not over time it's like huge jumps mm -hmm. of, of when we became hominids and when our brains got bigger um so but he he says that right now our modern hum human figure that we're in was made 700 and something thousand years ago after a crash happened so he thinks like some war happened and a species was destroyed and a ship was destroyed up in space and they came down here and they when that happened they also created us um that they're they're also humanoid um do you see this homo sapiens yep so he has us you know the apes australopithecus was six million years ago homo habilis was five million years ago homo erectus four million years ago right he says uh this is the cranium the cranial capacity, how it jumped from Homo habilis to Homo erectus, a huge jump. And then Homo sapiens was only 700,000 years ago. So you're talking about exponential growth here. That's, yeah. what we're, that's the chart we're looking at. Exponential growth, exactly. Just boom, 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 boom. And that's where we are right now with cranial capacity. Um, he even says, and I, I bought one of these, not, not I don't think because of him, but I, I also... 
always was always interested in tektites and tektites we don't really know what they're from they have theories of what tektites are now what's a now what is a tektite i've never heard that is is a rock a, a, a rock that looks like it's made from lava it's like a black kind of rock but they're very smooth they're perfectly smooth um he actually has and has some on on his account too um, but he thinks tektites are are proof like this is one look at that mm -hmm. oh that's... He, but he says proof of that these that this ship was destroyed like a bowl face. with oatmeal in it yeah <laughs> But because the shape is strange, I have one, but the shape is completely, that... completely different than that. Um, I mean, people people say that they're from that they're from meteorites that crash, and then that mm -hmm. that material that goes up in the air and then cools come out to be tektites. Uh, Interesting. I have one that doesn't look like what he has, what he showed, but mine it just looks like a normal rock, but it looks like a, a black moon rock is what it looks like. I'll show it to you. All right, cool. But he has really good research. And again, it's he. It's uh, there was a paper that came out. You know, I wish I could remember now the details of it because I read a book a few years ago. But it was something about that crash or something that crashed seven hundred thousand years ago, exactly when that happened to us, um, when 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 we became um, what we are today. Nice. You know, Homo erectus, I guess that was called. <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do you know about this FBI document? It's not new, like this guy says it is. I saw it years ago that the FBI released it, uh, basically about the Roswell crash. No, uh, but I, I'd love to hear uh, whatever you know, whatever lie the government is selling now or again. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been in it's been in the archives for a long time. Yeah, it's it's, it's nothing new, but I, I do want to read it just for you know, just for those that have that are not into this as much as we are. Right to show that, uh, yeah, that yeah. there are leaked there are leaked government documents, official ones. Um, so is it? Oh wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, and I, I just want to be careful about this. Is that anything that the government is going to release is might have, or I'm ninety percent certain that's going to have a a psyop reason for them right. to release. Right. Some, some weird twist in there to yeah i get it yeah so here it is this is officially from the fbi can i zoom in here it is yep there you the go. following information was furnished to and it's blocked out blocked of course out. yep an investigator for the air force stated that three so-called flying saucers had been recovered in new mexico they were described as being circular in shape with raised centers approximately 50 feet in diameter each one was occupied by three bodies of human shape but only three feet tall dressed in metallic cloth of a very fine texture each body was bandaged in a manner similar to the black out suits used by speed flyers and test pilots according to mr blacked out informant the saucers were found in new mexico due to the fact that the government has a very high powered radar set up in that area and it is believed that radar interferes with the controlling mechanism of the saucers no further evaluation was attempted by S.A. Blacked Out concerning the above. This was March 22nd, 1950. Yeah, I've heard that. Everyone, um, you know, when you think when the word Roswell comes up, first of all, it's the wrong place. But um, people don't <laughs> seem to realize there was, well, you know, possibly more than one crash. Yeah. Uh, and people always seem to forget that. Th three. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. What yeah, the think? folklore is three. That's that's what the folklore says, at least. Mm. Um, and uh, and then a live alien was found, right? And we we've covered this in the show before, and that he was he was interrogated by military contractors and defense con just to understand how the ship worked and the technology. And we took that information, and you know, we're in the age we are in now because of those crashes, right? right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So again, and, and the radar now. The, that came out after whistleblowers said that you know because like why why would a craft that came from interstellar would right. just crash you know but if we had high powered radar in there i guess you know maybe if these things are with consciousness consciously driven it could mess up and it could be a purely human technology radar you know we could I mean, that's not that's not crazy to think about we have to have our own trajectory of of creating technology um that's different from something else it doesn't mean because they're advanced that they thought about everything, you know, 
Right. Um, well, and and this is this is one of those things I've brought it up on the show before. But if if something is alien, like truly alien, um, yeah. y- you know, something like radar could, you know, possibly screw up their whole thing. I mean, if all yeah. their science is based on one thing, you know, completely different from our own, you know, it's not inconceivable that radar would be able to, you know, screw up the navigation or whatever. Yeah, and they could have fixed it after that. Like, oh, all right, we need to protect ourselves right. from these things, and it's, that's why it's not, they're not falling like flies. Right, exactly. The but they did back then. There was three of them that fell and crashed, and you know they also they it was it was in Corona. It wasn't in Roswell. Right. Yeah. Uh, what did the guy say? He he said that it happened. Yeah, Corona, and even uh, and the, and the, and around the other areas. It was like one was even farther than farther than that. Uh, we covered we covered in New Mexico. He said. I think I think the only reason it was Roswell is because I'm trying to remember, like Roswell was the, there. It was what you kind of cut out there. We have we have a base there. Is that I I think the base came after. No, because, no, because uh we had that was it was a nuclear it was it was the only nuclear um not powered nuclear armed battalion mm-hmm. in the world at that time. Oh, ah, okay. This is in 47. Yeah, cuz 45 we they tested it in uh in new mexico also in trinity at the trinity site but there was a base there and that was i think the 502 504 i forget what they're called but it was the only and that's that's probably the interest there that we had nuclear weapons or they had nuclear weapons well so they were coming after uh or are attracted to nuclear technology yeah i mean if you have that that the power of the gods in your hand they're like okay who are these people? What is going on? Right, you might want to check them out. Right, yeah, exactly. And then, and then you get knocked out of the sky because um, <laughs> they have some sort of radar technology that you don't quite understand. Yeah, and it's it's been nukes really for a long time. I mean, throughout the seventies and eighties, it stopped. Now, I mean, but even like, and it might be why they don't want countries to make nukes because then they'll attract these, and then they'll be in the knowledge of it. I know Iran has incidences of it iran has a different perspective though on this because there was one that happened recently where they had Mm -hmm. a ufo uh come to their their facility but their comment is it's strangely it's uh, these ufos strangely follow u.s politics or something that's what they said (laughs) (laughs) oh god they don't believe it's aliens i think it's the united states doing it yeah well (laughs) hard hard to disagree with him on that part i know right yeah I mean, it's not crazy to think we have we have rogue elements that have these technologies, and that could be what we saw in that video of the Mexican yeah. airline that went that went across. Uh, and it could be just maybe some maybe an, an object that got because it doesn't look like it was flying; it looks like it was coming by it, right? Mm-hmm. That they were, so it could have been one that's malfunctioning, something like that. Yeah, or it could be another psyop. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, to keep the interest that, there. Uh, that's where I'm at at this point. I I can't trust anything I see on the internet. It has to be with my own eyes, and even then, even then, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what Project Bluebeam is all about. You, you know, is is making holograms in the sky. So, you know what? Yeah, I don't know. How can I trust what I what I can see? Well, again, we're gonna have to do that episode, an episode from that cliff that's uh, that's that's right in front of a known, a pretty much known UFO base out in the Pacific. So, let's uh, let's let's pick a date. All right. So, um, how about? I mean, summer's like maybe May. I mean, next next month. Yeah, I what can are do we? that. What are we? We're April 9th right now. Yeah. So, yeah, we can do sometime in May. Man, time keeps on slipping. This year is flying by. Yeah, we're in May fifth month already. So, uh, but yeah, let's, let's choose a Saturday, like a Saturday okay. night. Let's see here. We have May, not May, 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 May like the thirteenth. May third. I mean, I don't. I I know I don't have anything going on that. Well, day. it's a month from now, so that way we can just book it. And that way we're not, we won't have an excuse that go, oh I got, I got really busy or, or you know and I won't either I'll just say right, sorry it's booked up hold on I'm put I'm putting this in my calendar yeah yeah so let's do that and then you know we can record it 
May 13th. I'm going to put it in two. That'd be fun. You know, it could be a really boring episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just hang out and, talk and yell at each other about politics. <laughs> now, the thing is, it's a public area, so there's, there's going to be people that might show up. Or maybe we go do it late enough where no one's going to show up. So I'm thinking we might have to do it like 11 p.m., even midnight. Yeah. That way we're yeah. alone. Yeah, I was going to say, it definitely needs to be dark out. Yeah, we'll take flashlights, all that stuff, so we don't see, like, you know, reptiles on the on the walk there <laughs> because it is a is it, it is a probably 10 15 minute walk i would think uh on the trail to get out there uh, okay. but there's a bench so we can sit there and just do it <laughs> all right should we get like a should we get like a gopro no they won't show up if we do that they won't show up unfortunately i i mean we can i was gonna say we it doesn't really matter what um um, recording device we have it's always going to show up as lights in night which is nothing <laughs> you, know what yeah, I, you know what i mean just showing up at the same time that we're asking and you know and not just asking but like attracting them that would be kind of strange wouldn't it sure would unless it's like unless it's a military outpost out there like oh let's mess with these guys what are they doing <laughs> 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 which is not far-fetched Hey, look at that. We made it to an hour. We sure did. We're going to have to come with like a, a, a prayer or a, a mantra to get these things to show up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. There is there is a CE5, which is Dr. Greer's uh, uh, movement. His theory. Of to, his theory of just contacting these things with, without the government. We don't need them, right? But he has an app, and I downloaded it a while ago. And, and he does, there's a protocol and he does teach like how to get these things to show up. And it's mostly meditation. He's been meditating for a long time, uh, but it's meditating. It's showing, it's basically, and also envisioning where you are located on the globe kind of thing. Where, mm -hmm. Like I'm here, you know, like try to imagine yourself looking down at earth and then coming down to where you are. And that way you're, you're showing your location. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so we can do something like that. I, I kind of, I'm, I'm told you I've been doing remote viewing courses and dude, it's getting good. It's getting really good. So there's <laughs> something with our consciousness and if something's tapped into that, you can definitely invite it. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this. All right. Me too. All right. So May 13th, we're going to do it. All right. I've got it in my calendar. We're good to go. <laughs> awesome. All right, dude. Well, I think... That'll do it for us here at the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. That, of course, is Adam. I am Topher. And Adam, can you tell us where to find us on social media? You can find us at Twitter at UAP the podcast. Um, and then you can find Topher at, at Topher it all. So we're pretty active on there, pretty responsive. There was someone that we asked to come on, but, you know, didn't, didn't follow up. Um, there was that video about, uh, you know, that, that object we showed that that looks like a dolphin. Mm -hmm. Someone did say, someone contact me. I have all these experiences. I didn't, I was thinking I, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I'm not sure. No one really responded. I was looking at his feed. There's nothing there. So nothing important there, but you know, people, if you have experiences, reach out to us. Please um, do. I would love yeah. to love to talk to you. I mean, yeah, we've had our experiences and we know that how, how eye-opening they can be. And I just want to see, we, we, the more data we have, and like Jack, Jacques Vallée said, the more patterns we can recognize. And, you know, if the pattern is the same, then we can know that's what's, what it is out there, what it's trying to communicate, or what it's doing. Exactly. And we try to put up a show every week. Uh, last show, last week's show, we're putting it up today. So that, that is our deep dive into, into Skinny Bob. It was a good one. So those who don't know about Skinny Bob, it's a really good podcast <laughs> and a good intro and a deep dive into what that what that was. It's it's great. It's really good. Uh, I like the part where somehow we get into politics and are you know ye yelling about politicians. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we, I don't know how we did we did it twice. It was great. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, yeah. makes sense, right? Because if it turns out to be fake and sign up, of course it's frustrating. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well awesome and I'm going to put up our our podcast on other platforms now so right now we're only only on Spotify 
so if you just search uncovering anomalies podcast you can follow us there but we are gonna go up on all the other platforms today awesome so it's official huh yeah it's official we're gonna do it and you know what whatever if, if we do get canceled then there's other ways for us to just host it ourselves and then people can put it into their uh, into their podcasting app all right hell yeah sounds good to me man <laughs> awesome well that's good Topher. i certainly enjoyed it adam i always love talking to you you know <laughs> yeah me too and you know hopefully this week of work is not as hectic now that you've had a oh it's gonna be much much worse <laughs> oh man <laughs> well hang in there hang um, in there i'm trying happy easter happy, happy easter. um you know whatever you're doing over there Yes, we're going to hide some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. All, All right, right, guys. guys.